Fraternal Correction, 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. Today's Gospel passage deals with fraternal correction. According to Jesus, there is a process by which we are to correct one another. Ideally, first we are to correct the individual in private. If the one we correct does not repent, then we are to bring another with us and once again correct the individual. Finally, the third step. If this fails, then we are to bring the matter to the public, to the church. Brant Petrie points out that to interpret this passage correctly, its biblical context needs to be considered. One important component of the context is the placement in the book of Matthew of the text we just heard proclaimed. Matthew 18 takes place after Matthew 16. In Matthew 16, Jesus gives to Peter the authority to bind and loose. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Similarly, in today's gospel passage, but to the disciples, in particular the twelve apostles, Jesus says, Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Unlike Matthew 16, explains Petrie, where Peter is given the power of the keys, signifying he is the leader of the twelve, those Jesus speaks to in this passage are not given this leadership position since it had been previously delegated to Peter. The last line of today's gospel passage, for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them, also refers to the apostles in a special way as well as to us. A modern example Petrie gives of Jesus fulfilling this verse now is Jesus' presence in the midst of the bishops, the apostles' successors, when they gather together as bishops in a council, whether local or ecumenical. Ecumenical means pertaining to the whole world, like the Second Vatican Council. According to Jesus' instructions, if an offender is taken before the church and still refuses to repent, then he should be treated as a Gentile and a tax collector. How are we to interpret this seemingly harsh request? For at the time of Jesus, Gentiles and tax collectors were rejected and treated very harshly by the Jewish people. The Gentiles were rejected since they were deemed as unclean, and the tax collectors were scorned, rejected since they, were willf they willfully collaborated with the Romans. Remember, reminds Petrie, that Jesus also teaches us that we are to love as he loves. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I loved you, you also should love one another. Jesus does not reject and scorn the Gentiles and the tax collectors. Instead, Jesus ate with them, such as with Zacchaeus, the tax collector described in the Gospel, and even praised one of them, in the case of the Roman centurion, by saying, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. Jesus' words and deeds tell us that we are never to give up hope for even the most hardened of hearts, or when we become aware of part of our heart that seems so impervious, so hard to change, to become more like the heart of Jesus. We are to try once again to bring that individual to repentance, Try once again for grace to sink more deeply into our hearts, transforming them into hearts that more deeply participate in the one divine heart of Jesus Christ. When we fraternally correct one another, may we become more like Jesus when he corrects as one who offers the corrected hope for repentance and change in their lives. For, as the Gospel says, God did not send the, his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. God bless.